press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. Let's look at the Terraform architecture. We start off with the Terraform CLI. If you recollect from the previous video, we created a file called getting started, which is this particular file. And using this Terraform configuration, we created some resources in AWS. Using this particular configuration file, along with the Terraform CLI, we created some resources. Now, what happens behind the scenes is whenever we trigger a CLI command, be it apply or a plan, in the backend, it triggers the request to the core system, which is the Terraform core. Terraform core creates a file called the TF state or the Terraform state. Using this particular file, it maintains the state of the infrastructure. So this particular file was also created as a part of this project when we did the init or the apply. So it created some entries in this particular file. Right now there is nothing because we deleted the resources in the last video at the end. So terraform.tf state is the file which maintains the state and this is leveraged by the Terraform core to come to a conclusion whether it needs to create resources or it needs to delete resources. So it maintains this tf state file like its own database so that it can understand what it needs to do and what it has currently. Now how does the Terraform core interact with the different cloud providers? So in order to do that, there are different plugins which are called as Terraform providers. These Terraform providers can interact with different cloud platforms to execute the corresponding infrastructure provisioning, whichever we have mentioned in the .tf files. Now, if this is confusing, I've just put a simplistic diagram. So what happens under the hood is Terraform core interacts with these Terraform providers. These are like different APIs or libraries using which we can speak with the infrastructures. So for AWS, there are Terraform AWS providers which are specific to AWS. This is a separate library compared to the one which is there for Azure or Google Cloud. So for every infrastructure, Terraform has a different provider library or an API using which the Terraform core interacts with these infrastructure. And that is what we would have seen in this Terraform file here, which is this. So this is the AWS provider and we are providing the specific version of the provider. If let's say you want to provide your own provider, you can definitely do that using the source option here. So right now we are using the AWS. So we leverage the AWS provider and we leverage the corresponding version of that particular provider. So that's the Terraform architecture. Now, how does this glue into our continuous integration pipelines, right? So we call Terraform as an infrastructure as a core tool because using Terraform, you can integrate it with your continuous integration and continuous delivery tools to have an end-to-end -end automation done. To visualize that, I've just put some architecture diagram for that. So let's say we had a repository in GitHub and we created a file called gettingstarter.tf and using the Terraform CLI within GitHub Actions. So GitHub Actions is a workflow tool or CICD tool within GitHub using which you can run your continuous integration or continuous delivery pipelines based on workflows. We can have a GitHub action using which we can trigger the Terraform CLI to use a specific provider so that we can create our resources, whatever is mentioned in our TF file. In this case, it is called gettingstarter.tf and we can create the necessary resources within the AWS infrastructure, be it lambdas or EKS or S3 buckets, etc. So this AWS Terraform provider will help Terraform CLI in translating the Terraform code or the HCL, which is the HashiCorp configuration language into the AWS specific language. Obviously, you can replace the GitHub actions with Jenkins or maybe with AWS code pipeline or even with Azure pipelines. You can leverage any CI CD tool of your choice. This is how the end to end infrastructure as code is achieved by leveraging Terraform in automating your infrastructure by having your code as a source of truth for provisioning your infrastructure. I hope you are able to understand the architecture of Terraform and how it glues up within your end-to-end -end pipeline. In the next video, we will look at some of the basics within the HCL or the Terraform file so that we can understand how we can leverage the configuration file to do some complex operations. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.